didn't qualify for the finals. That's what's wild about this format is we're looking for 15th. And we've seen teams easily drop 30-point victories. Last week, we saw a 54-point victory, which is almost the entirety of the point totals that, that begot the team that got 15th. So there's really anybody's game for qualifying, but all eyes are on the bubble teams. We're looking at Believe. We're looking at Ebates. We're looking at Mire, and, and so on and so forth. So a lot of room to work with, but you're running out of daylight at the same time. Two more maps to go. And again, looking at those point totals, looking, doing a little bit of math for us here, 15th place, I believe, has just under about 9.5 points or so per map average, which is almost a, exactly what we saw last week. If yeah. you get double digits, you're feeling good. If you have a couple maps under double digit points, you've got to drag up your averages by over exceeding that point total. And, and we saw Team Biffle do that, right? They made a fairly impressive jump as well. They've jumped all the way up to ninth place. They're still technically at risk of relegation, but they'd really need to drop the next two maps for that to be the case. And, and that's pretty surprising as well, just given the fact that they end up fell, uh, falling, I think, like 17th overall in the last map. Yeah, picking up plenty of kills. Again, showing the, the situation that we've spoken about where kills are everything. It's kind of highlight that. We do have Mire, which is a team right on the cusp right now, sat in 14th. They actually won a map earlier, but it just goes to show that even though they won that map, the fact that it's a relatively passive game from them, picks up a lack of kills, doesn't give them the full effect of that multiplier to allow them to have a comfortable rest of the afternoon. You spoke about it a little bit there. We've got two maps remaining, and for a lot of teams now, this is starting to get really tight for you. You've had opportunities to figure out your afternoon, test a couple of strategies. It's got to all stick from here. And, well, one of the teams that are really making it stick are Foreign Jace, Exact, and Sir Taylor won two maps so far in the afternoon. First, relatively comfortably on 86.5 points and looking real good. I like it. We're starting with the team that just won, but this team has made it to the finals already. Yeah, from a point total standpoint, they're near 90 points and an impressive game in the last one to win it all. But the most impressive game thus far from a win total standpoint was their game in game one for a 36 point victory. The biggest game of the day, though, was a 40 place second place from Team Noob. So we will see and uh, excited to see where the rest of these bubble teams shake out. But we got to watch the winners of the last map first as they uh well uh, they're an interesting strategy to check out some of the uh info of the area it, i will say for the sake of jace here not one i've seen on main stage ever in my history of casting warzone is using the uh the kind of deployable cameras uh around the map yeah. to kind of scout out the surrounding areas but i respect the game my friend yeah don't see it very often but play with the sandbox as you are allowed i guess it will allow them to assess the situation. The problem is what they likely want to do is start assessing whether or not they can play around that buy, but there's a team on a building looking over it. And I think actually Exact is under some pressure from them right now. He's just trying to essentially call out to his teammates and will Jace look to hit a rotation here and wrap around and provide some support himself. The problem is in the early game, of course, you are very worried that there's going to be uh, a couple of players lurking nearby. You can hear the comms coming in. Exact isn't sure of the situation and looks like he's running relatively low on plates. So right now, he needs his teammates to come and support. Are they getting pushed in as Taylor looks to come in from the other side? This trio, difficult spot for them right now. They've had a fantastic afternoon, but they've got to be careful at the start of this map. So far, so good. And again, they could drop double zeros and it really wouldn't matter too much. They, they'll make it. it. They won't feel good about making it, but they'll make it regardless of the almost 90 points uh, achieved thus far. The cutoff last week was about 57.8 points. I can only imagine, uh, you know, kind of the, the differential between this, this week and last week is probably going to be somewhere within a standard deviation of like two to three points between that so you're looking for somewhere around 60 points as your cutoff which means anybody over that is likely safe there's a lot of teams under that though as we kind of swap perspectives around we're going to swing between several of the teams on the bubble team smixy has been inside the top 15 even the top 10 for most of this tournament but they have fallen out after a frustrating last map smixy has fallen to 18th place overall so uh, not bad but not inside of the quote-unquote money that is the finals hundred 150k on the line and you're at least walking away with something even if you get last in that finals you gotta make it there first a classic team shot just doesn't quite succeed the ram is solid but that range is pretty dang far able to scare off a couple of opponents and they're gonna go for the rotate uh, yeah you're right to call it out frustrating for smixing the fact that they are seeing their 
qualification spot. They looked at one point relatively comfortable. They were looking to put themselves in a spot where qualification was all but assured. And it just seems like over the last couple of maps, they've slid down bit by bit. And even in situations like that, you're seeing one of the players push on out. And I'm, I'm just not sure I agree with it. I know that you've spotted a player come flying back on him, but you've got to assume that they're perhaps getting back to their squad here in the early game. So perhaps difficult situations for them just nice not panning on out and kens does a great job to light up two here on the edge of the gas and the contract will now come on through showstopper sees one out as well a great start for a squad that again another one that kind of need to have a good last two maps here to get themselves through to qualification yeah you may not believe me this is actually kind of my backup team to to beat 15th at the end of the day a, a very strong squad another team of returners uh from last week you've got rob starter and showstopper showing up here with kins instead of quirky and so far so good in this map they were looking pretty decent throughout the day but nothing to write home too much about 19th place overall picking up a few eliminations here uh you know showstopper one of the only lebanese kind of warzone competitive players out there uh was able to make it to world series of warzone as well uh, global finals so really strong player uh alongside the likes of robstar who you've already touted his skill uh, excited to see if this trio can make it i'd love to see them make it ken's one of the best players out there in general uh, obviously uh, one of the best uh, women competitors in the scene consistent women competitors constantly playing tourneys so watch out for that trio they're just outside of top 15 but a chance to make it in this one yeah he based considering where he wants to call in the pa but uh, perhaps just using it to scout and Highlighting teams around this buy station. And I think you heard a comm come through there. I'm going to push this. That will be the young gun. That is Enkyo absolutely flying at this. Not surprised to see him getting aggressive. Will show very little respect to anyone in the lobby, to be honest. He's so confident in his own ability to take on fights. Put on a real show in the trials of Urzikstan this week. And, well, all of a sudden that PA comes in. Unfortunately, that means Ebates can't push. But what he can do is try and provide cover fire. And he suspects that there's someone directly underneath him as they surround this. Look at this collapse. This is beautiful. Out of the trio there. Enkyo comes in through one area. Gromalok the other. Ebates the backside. And it's just a complete surround. And they do a fantastic job to clean up a good team. We spoke about them. Mire, Go, Clamp and Go. Uh, I think I erroneously said that they'd won a map earlier in the afternoon. I was wrong. I'm thinking the other Mexican team. But they were having a solid afternoon at one point. However, right now... Now, that team would not like to be eliminated as such because they are only just inside qualification by 1.8 points. Yeah. That, no, it's a great breakdown. Mirai's team is the bubble team, and they just got wiped. Now, I don't think they're fully eliminated out of the lobby, likely some gulags, etc., but a big win here. Uh, that was basically Ebates' squad 14th fighting Mirai's team, who's in 15th, and they're separated by 0. .4 points. A massive moment, and I'm sure they're aware of that. Maybe not quite aware of the stakes at which that fight was, but uh, very casually took down a very strong team, like you mentioned. So, continue to rotate around all of these teams on the bubble, all of these teams at risk risk of relegation this is kins versus smixy another battle of two teams right next to each other 18th and 19th place in a fight right now and who's going to come out on top it's going to be kins kins takes down smixy through the smoke and they don't lose a player for it it's a 3v1 in the final fight you can only imagine kins teammates going to run out of here yeah or rather absolutely Smixie's. Sorry, and all of a sudden, it, it, well, Robstar's in trouble somewhere as his teammates try and rotate on over. Robstar does have high ground, so perhaps a potential opportunity to back on off and allow his teammates to arrive. Grenade does not connect. Robstar's calling out and has managed to drag T down. So now doing enough to try stay up, but no, he will fall in the background. Someone's picked him off from somewhere. Well, self might well come through, but that's a oh, difficult no. push out if you're Ken's. I'm not sure I agree with that play. She is indeed one of the best women we have in Warzone, but... There's a lot of buildings out that side around that buy station. And we're actually going to get ourselves a night vision gulag. Personally, don't see many of these, but we get a lot of them in customs. And they're very different. It's between Kens and Smixie. Oh, wow. So they've already fought as a team. Now it's fighting as solos. Two of the best women competitors in the scene. Two of the best competitors in the scene. And they are going to blows. They are going down to the final HP. Both plates cracked. Kens just barely wins it through the night vision. And they've got a great game going. Kins is already on eight here. Still technically early game. This is a huge moment for that trio. And I, I kind of spoke some things into existence. Predicted the future that Kins' teammate Showstopper was going to have to get out of Dodge and run away. Luckily able to do that. And luckily teammates able to get back into the map without having to spend time at a buy station. Like we're seeing right here. Selly, one of the other best women in the scene. Pushing uh, I believe that's King Maddie on the other side. Yes. Wiping another squad. This trio moving on all cylinders. And I will say there's a great example of playing around buy stations. You know there's going to be teams there. 
And look who their bounty is. Talk about an information gathering tool. Is that a squad you want to push? Usually no. Today, no. still no. Uh, never in a million years. So sometimes when you get these bounties, you figure out which team it is. You say, okay, we know exactly where that team is, which means exactly where we don't want to go. Let's move around them and work around them. They're likely going to pick up a lot of kills along the way as well. So let's maybe take a different rotation if we want eliminations. Yeah, absolutely. And this is the team currently outside of qualification, currently sat... Well, coming into this lobby anyway, they were sat in 23rd with 27.9 points, which puts them outside. By the way, it's come back to that Smixie and Ken's Rosie Gulag. Like, there's a lot of storylines riding into that. But Team Smixie sat in 18th with 35.7 points. Ken's sat in 19th with 34.7 points. So one between them. That's now evened up thanks to the Gulag. But also, as you said, Ken's was on eight herself. That squad looks like they've had a really good start. That is the kind of number that we're talking about, double-digit kills, where they can likely just rotate on into center. They've put themselves in a position now where they can start to consider all the placement multipliers. They don't need to worry too much about kills. They can put themselves in for a real good game here. If you lose that Gulag, your team's weakened. You perhaps don't get that rotation in order to give yourself the advantage of the multiplier. So a huge moment from Ken's. It's unfortunate for Smixy in their afternoon. Looking very tough as we are pushing on through our penultimate map here. Yeah, they're playing edge of zone, which I don't mind when there's still a minute and a half remaining. Several teams already on edge of zone, obviously on edge for that portable buy station. It looks like they know somebody's going for a res, which means they have player advantage. They've got three. Somebody going for a portable buy usually means they're going for a buyback, obviously. And as such, they should be able to win this. But let's swap back over. It looks like actually Showstopper Rob Kins able to answer back on Bubble, who tore down Kins just a moment prior, sending her to the Gulag. They're able to answer back, fly back, and get the revenge. And with the UAV in pocket, they've got quite a bit of information. They could push this fight, but there's no reason to. Look at the zone. 50 seconds remaining. They have to come to them. They've got high ground position. They have cover. They're cracking shield. A perfect example of how you need to play an edge of zone fight. Wait for them to come to you and hopefully grab the high ground position so you can grab the knock and then move on your merry way. The problem is there's too many buildings in their way, and they're going to be able to rotate out wide after getting shot at. And now Kins' team is the team that's going to get held here depending on the next zone. Yeah, but I agree with this play. Uh, Showstopper makes it rain there, by the way. We get a moment there where I, that's the correct call for me. We're still at 19 teams left. There's still a lot of work to be done in this lobby. And you can just back on off. Let's consider ourselves here. We've got quite a few kills. We can put ourselves together, get some resources, maybe rotate early and get ourselves a really solid spot and build ourselves into this, into what will need, be needed to get yourselves qualified. Because if you are one of these teams currently on the bubble, you've been averaging what, like, as we said, around nine points. You've almost got that in kills as far as we can tell. So if you get yourself then a really nice placement multiplier, you, you are really getting yourself away from this bubble conversation. By the way, as we speak about bubble conversation, I believe we've just found out that Mutex, that was sat in 12th, only a couple of points, a handful of points above qualification, went out very early. So another one for us to watch in our next map when we start looking at who will not be making Oof. next week. Great shout. A couple quick notes. Jailbreak is about to be active. And again, you can only come back if you have teammates alive. This could be a signal flare to try to grab a couple of eliminations and risk your life because you know you'll come back. But you got to do it now, and now it's too late. If you die now, you're going to be in trouble. Worst timing ever. Selly goes down and will get cleaned up. No problem. That's Funzy on the other side. They take out her teammate Wizard. Luckily does have the Gulag still and likely won't have an opponent for a little while because everybody just got brought back from the jailbreak. Now Kins swinging over. It looks like potentially on Omit T, which is Pat Zuka's squad. Not sure from that leaderboard. That's Sancho on the other side. So they're actually fighting a different team. There's several squads here on the edge of this zone. At the end of the day, with the mortar coming in, it's just trying to protect these portable buys. All three alive. Kins can kind of park here for a while and probably pick up several teams. Here they come. Just like Ducks migrating for the winner. Take them out, Kins. Pick them all up. Two buy stations here. Everybody on edge of zone is going to be moving this direction if they're lacking teammates. Absolutely, and the thing is, so as, you're, as you are this trio, you've now got to be very clean with these fights. You can't be having situations where you're not cleaning up your gunfights because as more teams arrive, you just want it to be nice and clean and crisp as you clean up all of these kills. Like Moments like that where you essentially bringing down Sage, you, you put yourself in a spot where it's like, okay, we know we've dragged that team down. Can we then you know, set ourselves up around these buy stations? As you said, they do have the right to do that, but if you start to allow all these teams to rotate in into you, you start to put yourself in potential third-party situations the problem is as well after this if you are that trio and you've not done enough 
all those teams stay alive, you've got a bridge and water to cross. Wow. So it very much so a spot where they can give themselves a, a great map or a really underwhelming map. And well, Ebates has fallen here. Gromalock's still up somewhere. And it, well, unfortunately, it looks like we've lost the young gun. Yeah, eBay is still not a kill to his name, but has ultimate high, obviously. Well, close to ultimate high. Somebody might be on top of that pop off power plant. But uh, yet again, back with FaZe Kaylee. Yet again, another team right on the cusp, right on the edge. About 20th overall. Need to make a pretty substantial leap here. And Juju's in trouble. He famously told me going into some of the World Series of Warzone qualifiers that their key to success was going to be to chow everything. We have to play with confidence, and it looks like he's doing just that. Taking down Sir Taylor on the other side. This is a big one. This is the team at the top. This is the team at the very top of the leaderboard. Team Exec dying here means nothing for the sake of their tournament series, which means they're going to play with reckless abandon. This is going to be a tough fight to win with a team like that on the other side. Flanked and Kaylee playing a touch slower, a touch more scared. Kaylee hears them. They both come flying in. No chance at all. And that's a third team. That's Believe. I believe that's Believe FPS on the other side, not Believe. There are two of those in the lobby, but a nice win there from Believe. Yeah, un unfortunate for FaZe Kaylee. She, she does a really good job, actually, of cooking that nade, cracking the shields above, and giving protection to her teammates who are in a spot of bother for sure, uh, who were in engaged in different fights and essentially being third party. But unfortunately, eventually the numbers overrun her. We move on over to Duzamir, Castillo, and Dark. We spoke multiple times this afternoon about how good this trio can be. And they're considering where to put themselves then when we start talking end zone. Only two kills currently on Duzamir, but you'd expect this trio be sat around a handful of kills and you know they've, they've had themselves a solid afternoon currently sat in 10th 52 points should really be out of the bubble conversation but i mean what it's 16 points you know you, you've still got to make sure you have some solid maps here so as the mexican squad rotate on in uav goes up lots of information and that will give them a real heads up about where they position next but that player above is going to be problematic and we spoke about resources you don't want to be constantly stuck in this situation where you're trying to put plates in and burning through them all you want to hold these for later <laughs> yeah you like to hold the smokes too but they will get down to low ground position now this is a really interesting spot if they like to hold and i don't think they are because of what i was about to say which is essentially yes you have low ground yes you have a roof over your head but you don't have walls and so because of that it's really not a great spot to hold down instead they're electing to head to somewhere well that has walls they're going to be more centrally located they're going to be set up for success and they might be able to pick up a team that elected to rotate here earlier i'm kind of surprised there's not a team already here 15 teams remaining they get there first a fairly early rotate but not the earliest i've seen in a while so deus amir who's currently sitting in 10th place right now has a chance to continue to rack up their success and likely secure a spot to the finals with this game if they can keep up the pace we're into some multipliers here we're into the top uh 1.3x here for top 15 it will continue to creep up in top 10 and top five and on board again with ken's showstopper and rob star as they just assess the lay of the land and honestly at this point again you can just lay low start to consider whether or not you want multipliers this push underneath could be risky smoke will signal flare to whoever's nearby and i'm pretty sure we actually saw the mexican squad not far from here not long ago so Got to be a careful rotation. If you do decide to push on out from here, you start to put yourself in between a lot of different buildings. Instead, if you head right or off towards the northern side, you're then on an open beach and there's very little coverage. And actually, Rob starts finding out because he's taking a couple of bullets. He will try and back on off just about by the skin of his teeth. He will get knocked, but that should be a res coming on through. And yeah, Ken's Robson and Showstopper finding out just how difficult a spot they have put themselves in here. Circle has 40 odd seconds. They've got to consider where they go. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, Rough no. grenade, and they're getting shot from multiple angles. One behind, one in front. Somebody's got a gas mask, and they are using it on edge. But kids go huge. That's actually Deus Amar's team that's pushing this fight. You're exactly right. Deus Amar, Castillo, both go down. They don't have player advantage because Kins is essentially out of the equation currently. But the Lebanese doesn't need it. Showstopper going massive against their third Z-Dark and gets the team wipe on the team in 10th. This is the game Kins needed. Their top 10 on a tough rotation. There's going to be team in nearly every building but they have a ton of eliminations to boot and they are coming through a very tough position where we swap perspectives to a team inside the top three here's noobs hasoka and Almond. they got here early they've cleaned up several kills because of it and now they're gonna have to make a move i'm jumping off this roof so i don't get fried you saw that immediately as soon as that deployable buy was aiming to come on in 
bullets ring out from various directions yeah, yeah, denying that to an opponent we spoke about how important they are with the new rule set that where we're not allowed redeploy flares and packs and so on and actually noob spots something here what, what was that was that a player or was that perhaps a shadow that just changed across the screen he seemed locked in oh for sure but this rotation is going to get them there nice and early still nine teams left and a full squad here if you are this squad you've getting sat in seventh currently 57.8 points an opportunity to put yourself much higher but there's someone inside can you open the doors you do you break shields and you start to burn through these opposing players resources the problem is one of your players is very far off right now and eight teams still up this is about to get very busy very quickly quick note kins's team was full wipe just after we left the perspective but still got top 10 so a massive moment but now the team in seventh gets knocked in eighth overall team noobs had fallen and from graces on the leaderboard after several chalk games but still inside the top 10 still likely qualifying if not assuredly let's pop over though caselli's getting slammed unfortunately because there's seven teams around her now make it six five teams into the top five and don lucky's going massive a chance to move back up this leaderboard yet again they had fallen from graces they're all the way down in 16th place even though they had won a map and now they've got a chance to win another one four teams remaining and they have all three alive just barely yeah, we've seen them close out good positions already this afternoon and it looks like they're in an unassailable round really although we are trying to find out whether or not that is against two twos or one and a three and well they're just going to get aggressive up against this fence line but there's a player sat in that window that will drag extra j down he looked for a second there looked like he was spamming to give on up but well his teammates be able to rotate over and pick him up that next zone by the way is going to push them around this wall and actually the opposing player pushes his picnic and nicole who are still up and that player on the rooftop is going to be a nightmare for them to get around a team we haven't seen too much on the leaderboard except for the fact that they're top 10, they're top 6. Haven't seen them on mate stage a ton, but they're putting out a show here in the final moments. Picnic Basket with the victory. Not a massive one, but a 24-point victory. Assuredly, books their tickets to the finals next week. They were in 6th place going into this one. 65 points on the leaderboard. Just past kind of that metric we talked about at just around 60 points. And they have done it this time around, winning that 5th map taking 24 more points and well past the metric of what you need to qualify very well done gentlemen it is good to see the boys back nick cool picnic basket and oakley boy all three have been playing together for a very very long time and it shows that chemistry certainly pays off yeah and he certainly did in that situation the way the three had essentially played was set up